Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we've got the Le Chapelle 983S Mark II two-channel vacuum tube microphone preamplifier on the bench for a first look. If you're out of the loop on high-end mic pre's, Le Chapelle was founded in 1999 by Minnesota-based Scott Le Chapelle. They started with the all-out, no-holes-barred, eight vacuum tube two-channel 992 preamp with a street price of around $3,750, which puts that unit in a slightly higher league than most of us play in daily, even at the professional level. Not to worry though, if the two rack space 992 is more than you're looking for in a dedicated pre, the 983S Mark II might be just the answer. With a street price of just $2,000 at the time of filming this video, this two channel single rack space tube mic pre and instrument DI is a versatile option that fits nicely into a lot of different situations. The mission statement from Le Chapelle is that they choose each component in the signal path to be of the highest quality, carefully selected to sound beautiful and last a long time. With that in mind, for this model they've chosen some really nice components. Let's pop the lid on this one and see what we've got inside. As we open this unit, let's talk build quality. This is right up there with some of the best gear I've ever used. It's obvious that the final assembly has been done by hand and by somebody who takes pride in their work. The signature color palette is continued on the custom PCBs, all of which are put together in a modular style, with each board handling its own tasks locally and connecting with its neighboring boards through various standoffs and headers. As we always talk about on this channel, the repairability of this unit is superb. The same custom PCBs are very clearly labeled, with loads of room to get in with a soldering iron and make a fix, and most every part I can see is easily identifiable and readily available brand name parts, so a huge thumbs up there. I'll link the spec sheets below, but they've chosen Cinemag CMMI 10 PCA microphone input transformers. Those are a 1 to 10 transformer, offering good shielding, common mode rejection, low distortion, and good phase characteristics in a really small package. After that, they're using a modern 12AX7EH tube. Now, these are a modern updated design specifically engineered for audio applications with reduced microphonic properties. You'll often hear folks claiming a lot of benefits from using vintage tubes, but most engineers who know what they're talking about will tell you that the modern equivalents are built of far better tolerances. They will serve you better in professional applications for sure. I'll link below to Mr. Carlson's lab and a few videos he's done talking about that in much greater detail. Then we head to the Jensen JT11DM line output transformers. Uh, this model is specifically engineered to offer the lowest possible harmonic distortion for high level, low frequency signals. This means super clean output even when you wind the volume way up. That leads us to the controls and where this pre really shines in my opinion. First of all, the feel of these controls is excellent. There's a nice weight to all of the controls that you'd expect in analog gear of this level. The detents in these knobs make uh, repeating settings simple and the matte finish on the whole unit keeps fingerprints and things to a minimum. Running through the mini toggle switches, we have a very useful mute switch. A choice of low pass filters at 10,000 or 5,000 hertz respectively, with my measurements showing those falling off around 6 dB per octave beyond that. Next up is the more common high pass filter, and that's offered in 50 and 150 hertz flavors with similar gentle 6 dB per octave roll offs. Polarity can be swapped easily, and like all of these switches, it features a useful indicator light. Uh, to let you know that that feature is engaged. Phantom power on these units is unique with La Chapelle's trademark True 48 technology supplying consistent 48 volts to even the most demanding loads. They say this helps with power hungry microphones and it helps them to recover faster from loud transients with less distortion and greater headroom. Speaking of those specs, this unit provides an advertised 72.5 dB of gain, has a frequency response of 9 Hz to 40,000 Hz, with a max output of 27.8 dBU at 1% total harmonic distortion plus noise. So what does that all mean? In my albeit limited experience with this unit, it all adds up to a very versatile package. 
I've really only had the opportunity to experiment with it here in the shop, but the range of variation you can get is really impressive. The first knob here controls how much of the signal is fed into the vacuum tube, and that really lets you select how much of that tube drive characteristic you apply to the signal. The way I have it set up right here is very little tube drive and a whole lot of this uh, output. This is the line level output control, and you can bring that up to get the desired output level you need. So using these in tandem along with the input pad here gives you an extreme amount of variability in the sounds you can get out of this unit. You can go everywhere from really clean and loud to super over the top tube compression and harmonics and an infinite range of possibilities in between the two. The user guide offers some examples and starting points for experimentation and getting into this unit, you quickly find out that each microphone and source kind of opens up a whole new palette of possible tones. The progression from the clean tone to experiencing that tube drive and some of those harmonics is a very gentle, natural one. But once you do get there, it is really fun to push it a little harder. It's really easy to get carried away with how natural that drive sounds and it just kind of adds a nice little crunchiness, a nice little grit that you can definitely start to wind up a little too much if you're not careful. Uh, but with two channels here, it's really not out of the question on an important take to uh, split and use both and maybe capture a nice clean tone as well as a more driven, more saturated tone uh, for those more important takes. So this is only a first look and I'd really want to spend more time with a unit of this caliber before offering any sort of real hardcore opinion in a review. And I definitely won't subject the folks who engineered this to having its quality judged online through YouTube uh, in you know questionable conditions. What I will say though, is that this pre is every bit at home amongst its peers in this category. And it offers a unique feature set uh, in a very small package. You'd definitely want to allow for proper venting uh, being a tube unit but with the single rack space size and the simple 24 volt XLR power input it makes a really interesting choice for mobile applications especially those of us who might need that kind of versatility you might need to go track something like a live recording for an orchestra where you need super clean transparent mic pre's and then you might want to take your recording rack into a studio later on and do some overdubs or tracking for for a project where you want to color the sound a little more. So this could be a really interesting option for somebody that works in that regard. I've been using it recently with the Dante Avio adapters to get it right into the computer for recording and that works out really well. Ultimately, if you're shopping in the $1,000 and up per channel mic pre category, find a dealer and get a demo of these units in person. Listen to it with the mics you intend to use and the settings that you're looking for and find the pre that's right for the job. A unit like this is a really nice unit if you're only going to have one pair of mic pre's. Something super versatile that you can get a wide range of use out of is perfect if it's your first set of mic pre's or the only set you intend to buy. Uh, beyond that, if you're looking for a specific tone or recommendation out of it, you definitely want to get in front of them in person and try them with your specific setup. That's really the only way you're going to get any sort of tangible idea of how well it's going to perform. That's all for this time. Leave any questions you might have in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video and share with your community if you can. It really is a huge help and you can share these videos in a lot more places than I can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.